Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about threads, one of the most interesting, one of the greatest, one of the scariest and possibly dangerous programming tools you have at your disposal. Have you ever wondered how to make your program work on two things at the same time? Well, today we're gonna to learn how. Several months ago, I made a video about fork and exec, and I showed you how to use fork to create a new process, to basically clone one process into two processes, and using multiple processes gives you two benefits. The first is concurrency. Both your processes can be working on separate things. They can be doing two different things at the same time. The second thing is isolation. Processes are isolated from one another, their memory is separate, and if one of them crashes, usually the other's just fine. Threads give you one of these. Threads basically give you the opportunity to get concurrency without the isolation. So basically your program can be working on two different things, making progress, moving forward, getting useful work done on two different things concurrently, but without the isolation. Threads keep it all in the same process. Threads have different call stacks, but they're in the same memory space. That means that one thread can write into the memory of another thread, which makes it easier to communicate between threads, and that can be both a blessing and a curse. But we'll get to that later. Today, I just wanna give you a brief introduction into threads and show you how to create one. So let's make a thread. There are several different APIs for creating threads. Some are only available on some operating systems. Yes, Windows has a function called create thread that can be used to create a new thread. No, I'm not going to demonstrate it today because I don't have a Windows machine handy. I'm going to focus on the POSIX threads API or pthreads because it's a standard API that you can use just about everywhere. And yes, you can use pthreads on Windows. You just have to download a third party library from SourceForge and there you go. You're on your way. But whatever API you're using, thread APIs tend to be all about the same. You're gonna have a function that creates a new thread with pthreads, that's thread create. And pthread create needs to know what code we want to run in the new thread. And so we're gonna pass it a pointer to a function that we wanna run. And thread functions can often take arguments. With pthreads, the thread function takes one void pointer argument and it returns a void pointer. And we'll get to that a little bit later. And that allows us to pass any type to our thread and return any type from a new thread. And we'll get to that later. You can also tell pthread create to give your threads specific attributes and things, you can, you can make things more complicated, but for now we're just gonna stick with the defaults and save attributes for another day because most of the time the defaults are just fine. My other disclaimer today is there is a lot we can talk about with threads. There's way, way more than I can put in this video. So in this video, I'm just gonna cover a simple example and then we're gonna add bells and whistles and complications in future videos. Okay, so let's make a simple program that does something simple, like stupid simple, like so simple that nobody would ever really do this but since when did we let that stop us? So let's make two functions, one that prints my turn every second forever, and one that prints out your turn every two seconds forever. Pretty simple, pretty stupid. But let's say we wanna do both, and let's say that, so like naively I could say, well, let's call one after the other, and then, well, you know what's gonna happen, but let's try it out anyway. Well, maybe if I can get my includes sorted out, header files, ugh. Okay, much better. Okay, so now we run the code and of course it just says my turn forever. And the second function never gets to run which doesn't seem to fit into the spirit of the example. So yep, you guessed it, we're going to make a thread. And so I'm gonna declare a new pthread underscore t variable and that's gonna represent my new thread. Then I'm gonna call pthread create. For pthread create, I need two things. The pthread underscore t I just declared that helps us keep track of the thread that we're gonna create and a function. Now thread functions, like I mentioned before, they have to look a certain way. In pthreads, they have to return a void pointer and they need to take a void pointer as an argument. So if we change up the my turn function to fit the mold, then we can just pass it to thread create. And then when the new thread runs, it's going to run the my turn function. Okay, and we compile it and we run it and it works. As you can see, the functions are running concurrently. They're interleaving their executions. You're saying my turn, your turn. They're taking turns and they're having a wonderful time at it. They're still not doing anything useful, but you and I could change that really easily by sticking code that does useful stuff in both of these functions and now we would have useful stuff happening concurrently. Maybe later. For now, let's consider a different scenario. What if our functions don't run forever? Well, we'll fix that by changing our while loops to for loops. And what if one operation takes longer than the other? Specifically, what if my new thread takes longer to run than the your turn function? Well, let's see. So it runs well enough, ah, but it doesn't print out all eight my turns. That's not good. You see, what happened is that main finished before the thread was complete. And we all know what happens when main is done, right? The program exits. But I wanted my thread to complete. And so we're gonna use thread join. Thread join is super useful. 
It'll wait until a specific thread finishes running and then it's gonna continue. And it, it's called thread join because oh, like this. Ooh, metaphors are so fun. And in case you don't like counting lines, let's print out I each time and, and yes, all loop iterations are accounted for. And I think that's where we'll stop today. Like I mentioned, threads are a really big topic. There are more thread functions coming about returning values from threads, about passing arguments to threads, about sharing data between two threads, and why threads are just as dangerous as they are awesome. If you don't wanna miss those other videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel, click the little bell so you get notifications whenever I post a new video. But for now, I leave you to ponder the mysteries of the universe and play around with, with your newfound ability to create threads and add concurrency to your programs. And so until next time, I will see you later.